Hey everyone, this is Carly Ann, and today I'm going to teach you how I paint hair on my characters. Now, I start off with a base color, which is the darkest tone, and then I'm going to go in with a mid-tone, which is like the middle range value, and I'm going to start drawing in the individual strands of hair. The reason why I start dark and then move to lighter and then lighter colors is anything that I miss while I do this will recede into the background and be in shadow. And if you kind of think of how hair lays on your head, the part that's closest to your scalp is going to be darker because it's farther away from the light. So I automatically am putting in this colors that will represent the actual values that I'm going to do later on. Um, this is actually the same process that I do when I do trees and bushes, but usually when I paint like skin or clothing or other things that I paint, I actually do a middle tone and then I add shadows and then do highlights. So this is kind of a special technique that I use for really organic textured shapes like this. And I'm actually playing this at real time. I'm not speeding this up at all. This is actually the size and the speed I was painting at. I just finished a project where I did like 50 characters in the last two weeks, so I have a very efficient process right now. I would expect it to take myself or anybody else longer than this one's going to take, but um, it's pretty efficient for you guys here, so I was excited to do this painting. Okay, next that I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing um, the highlights, and maybe I might just fill in this part here at the forehead just a little bit more, just do some more strands here. If you notice on my layers palette, I like to work with clipping masks a lot. That's one of the main things that I do. And it's just because it keeps you from going outside the lines, because I tend to color outside the lines and it just it automatically keeps it in there. And it's also not destructive. So I can keep that lower layer. And if I mess up, I can delete that layer that I'm working on and start over or whatever. Okay, so now I'm gonna do some highlights here. And I'm sort of thinking about where the highest peak of light is going to hit. So these are really round shapes, especially with curls. So the part that is very top of the curve is where we're going to hit with some highlights. And usually when you do highlights, you'll do like not as bright highlights in the shadows area as you would on the light side. But I'm going to do shadows over top of this. So I'm just keeping the exact same color. I'm just going over all the different parts and putting in that quick highlight there and I love doing this part because it, it immediately looks round now which is great okay so I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna go in with uh, a darker color and I like to use the lasso tool I feather it so it's probably like two or three pixels and I use the gradient bucket tool and I'd use this to do my soft shadows because I don't like blending <laughs> It takes too long and this is a really really fast way just to pop in some like really soft gradient shadows um, some of the techniques that I use here is you want to set your gradient to um, foreground to transparent and then I also I try not to when I drag it I don't go too close because um, it'll be too strong of a gradient so you want to kind of back away from it a little bit while you do it for the shadows, I just left it at 100%. And when I'm doing the light side here now, I'm actually going to set this uh, entire layer to overlay. And that helps it be extra shiny and like full of light. And I like to sort of, I generally go with a peach color for my light areas and a more of a blue, like purple in my shadow areas. So I'm just picking a different color here so that I can come in with more of the peach tone that I tend to like. And I'm going to lasso again the front area and do sort of the same thing. And after this, I'm going to, I realized that, sorry, those toolbars keep popping in because Photoshop decided to delete all my shortcuts, which was really fun. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to go in with some harder shadows. Um, I need to do the cast shadows. So for example, um, right here at the very bottom of her bun is going to be a lot darker just because it, the light is now hidden because the bun is in the way and also underneath her bow here um, that's going to be more of like a cast shadow so it's going to be significantly darker uh, right here um, you can see sometimes I have to drag it a couple times um, and maybe remake my shape sometimes I delete it all together and I just try again and it's sort of a little bit of trial and error in this spot 
And looking at it now, I actually think I need to go just a tad darker in some areas. So I'm going to keep doing that too, just, just to increase the level of contrast between the light areas and the dark areas, the areas that are in shadow over here. When you use a lasso tool, if you need to add more to your lasso tool, I think it's, um, I think it's alt and that will add and then uh, control will subtract and if, it might be the other way, but <laughs> that's how you can add more to your selection or less to your selection really quickly. Okay, and then I'm almost done here. The last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding in just the, my darkest darks. And they're really the lines that I'm going to use to delineate the different locks of hair. So um, if you think about it, hair tends to sort of group together. And when I'm doing this, one of the main things that I'm going to think about is making sure that when I'm grouping the hair together, I don't do it super evenly. I want to have some areas that are farther apart and some areas that are really close together. And this is like a something that's really good in general when you're doing uh, illustration, especially if you're illustrating something that's organic or natural because natural things tend to not be even, whereas something that's man-made tends to be more uh, evenly spaced out and it's so hard because when you're first doing art your natural instinct is to space it out evenly um, and you'll do it without even knowing that you're doing it and even when you know this principle if you go back and look at your art you'll often see like I had a teacher that had to point out exactly all the spots that I made my illustration even because I just couldn't see it and it's something that you really have to train your eye for and to practice and um, when I did this, I, I kind of played with different settings. I was trying multiply on my layer and I tried dropping the opacity, but I ended up deciding just to keep it at 100% and just changing the value there a little bit. So it's just a tiny bit darker. And I think we're pretty much at the end here. Uh, I'm going to try to do more of these tutorials. So if you guys like this, please do like, subscribe and share and go check me out on Instagram. I'm really excited to start getting to do these step-by-step -step videos for you guys as well because I want to be able to go more in depth for you than I can on my Instagram posts. So let me know what you guys want to see and comment below. Thanks!